This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Beam. If you want better sleep and 35% off your first month, head to beamorganics.com slash Lady Gang. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash Lady Gang. Welcome to the Lady Gang. You're about to listen to our podcast, but there is so much more our community has to offer. Follow us at the Lady Gang, join our secret Facebook group, shop our clothing line, books, and find out when we're going to be in your city at theladygang.com. We're so excited you're here. Enjoy the show. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight, and love is in the air. <laughs> oh my God, I could cry. <laughs> I'm so so excited. Becca, tell them about our shenanigans. Oh, oh my God. F- you guys. Okay. <laughs> so a little backstory is we're recording this episode on a day that we don't normally record episodes, but we knew we needed to get a fresh, a fresh mm-hmm. off the hot off the oven or hot out of the oven <laughs> story. Hot off the press. Hot off the press from our Miss Jacqueline Vanek, because she has very exciting news that you have all seen, but we're going to get to that. But Kelty and I needed an evil plan. So Mm -hmm. me and Kelty and Alex, we hatched this plan. We said, what's the one thing that Jack (laughs) could not say no to Yeah, He has to show up to record something. Mm -hmm. Like what's the one guest that she would have to show up or we would hate her forever. And so naturally we told Jack (laughs) that we booked Paula, Paula Abdul. Abdul. <laughs> I was like, I, I was so, so incredibly shocked at the Paula Abdul, like the booking at all, because we've tried to get her on the podcast for years now. And she said, no, we bought a cameo that she never did. So it's like, it was honestly, it was amazing. It was a miracle. A miracle. So, so we knew the big news was coming down. And we're like, a lot of times when we book the podcast, Alex will write us on our text chain and be like, hey, are you guys available um, on Tuesday at two o'clock to record AJ from the Baxter Boys? And we'd be like, yes, yes, yes. And we're like, okay, we need something that Jack, because we knew you're going to be in Vegas after. And yeah. we're like, She's not going to want to work on a Monday morning, but like, how do we get her to be like a hungover from Vegas and like not? And so we put it all on Paula. It is not Paula. It's just you. And then Ugh, I am Paula. Morning meet this morning and Jack's like, wait, do you guys want me to do something for the news? And we're like, oh, well, I guess we'll tell you. We're going to tell you now. I was going to have like, be like, bring Paula. And I was like, just kidding. But anyway, you're so Kelty, you're so funny. You have like the worst poker face because like I can tell when you're like trying to hide something and like not not just this morning because we were on a team meeting this morning talking about the episode (laughs) and you kind of just I was like, hey, like I think I'll record something with Jared and you just went silent and then you kind of just like smiled at me and like didn't say anything. (laughs) She's the worst secret keeper. Worst. I think Worst. I'm a good, okay, secret keeper. I'm a bad liar to your face. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could see right through you. So anyway, wow. we're so excited to be here, and we're gonna just do the regular good week, bad week. But we all know what Jack's good week is, and we'll get into that. So yes, sure is. Okay, well, it's time for good week. Yes, it is bad week. Oh no, uh, Kelty, would you like to start? You know what? I would because I have a real fucking bone to pick with Susan. Who's Susan? Um, I very rarely go on my Facebook messages from like the Kelty Knight Facebook page, but, um, somehow you mean your I, Facebook page or like, the well, fan like page? I have my Facebook page where like my family and like mm. my real people are. And then there's like the p- Facebook is like through the eras of Facebook, they have made you create many different eras yes. of yourself. It's very yeah. confusing. So anyway, there's like a night, Kelty Knight pa- Facebook page, which I don't really update and I never go on, but I was on it last night. And Susan, this, this uh, segment's going to be called Susan's unsolicited opinions about me. Yes. So can't wait. first your eyes look like you're sleep deprived. Just saying your Canadian friend from New Brunswick. I see a lot of darkness under the eyes. Oh, oh. my God. August 5th. I prefer your lips normal sized or <laughs> before September 27th. I hope your little niece doesn't see your F words online here for her cute. Thank you. note. Is oh this my- the same person? Same person. Two days later. 
I don't know what you did to your lips or the area between your nose and your lips. It looks awful puffy. Also, <laughs> you were going to get back to me weeks ago about the CBD cream delivery to Canada, but you never did. Wait. Have you had communication with this woman before? No, I've never written back. October 13th. I hope you sleep more. You always look so tired. And then just last night, no. after my Fabletics haul, where I so bravely showed you the Fabletics underwear I did not want to do, but it's what came in my package. Have a baby. You won't be as thin. <gasps> what the f- That's dark, Susan. <laughs> This is so okay. This does remind me dark. (laughs) This reminds me of a time in my early twenties that I was stalked by a celebrity son. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but the way that he stalked me is he was replying to like anything I would post on Facebook. He would reply to me like in a message in a personal message. Mm. And that was our community, but that's what she seems like she's doing. She's like, thinks that it's a We're back talking. and forth conversation, We're but not it's talking. just, There's it's no, just her. Yeah. It's just Susan. Susan, um, Susan I just want to like public service announcement. It's oh, really um, rude to say, have a baby to a woman in her 39s. Okay. What yeah. a bizarre and message. And just... also my lips were puffy and they've gone down. <laughs> so you were right about that, Susan, but I'm not giving you that grace. Okay. Good week. Um, I, um, have air conditioning. Dad, oh, wow. Peter, his foot's broken. He hobbled up the side of the road. He fixed my air conditioning. It is so cold. And then of course today it's 50 degrees and raining in Los Angeles. You don't need it. Karma's a bitch. Becca. Well, I can't believe your dad didn't have a boot on. I was so upset seeing him make it's the track down. It's crazy. He's a beast. He, he is. I know. What a machine. And I'm he like, is. put the boot on. And he's like, uh, I'm fine. Blah, blah. I was like, you're not fine. Like I saw the x-ray. Like I saw the bone chip hanging Ew. out mid foot. Like yeah, it's you're broken. not fine just because it's four days later and you're not in excruciating pain. Ugh. Ugh, men. Love them. Um, men do you see where I get it? When yeah. I like had pneumonia at the Grammys and I was like, I'm not missing this. And I just like did well, the Grammys. Well, yeah, but the Definitely difference- from your dad. But does your dad then go on social media and talk all about his broken foot? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's true. Right, you're right. That's a that's a Kelty does specialty. Do, does he call the paparazzi while he's hobbling down to fix your air conditioning? Or yeah. like, or like, I don't know, release some sort of an article documenting near your car death. crash, <laughs> near death experience. So difficult. That wasn't my idea, by the way. Whose idea sure. was it? It was E.T.'s idea because they wanted to explain why the f- I was wearing an ugly ass sling on television for six weeks. Oh, oh wow. Okay. God forbid. Jeez. God forbid. Okay. Um, okay. So my good week is I am going to the Formula One race. Oh, my God. It yes, happened. I am. It happened. Well, I got- how did you get a hookup? Well, you know what? I got friends in high places. Um, That's what's up. So my wonderful publicist, Michael, who Kelty hooked me up with, that's the greatest gift that she's given me thus far. Wow. Um, that's it. The publicist dark. <laughs> so dark kidding. And day for me over here at Lady Gang. He's, anyway, he's so wonderful. And he's yeah. like, let me see what I can do. And then there's this wonderful person. I'm not going to put them on blast. Cause I, I don't want to get this person in trouble if I'm like not famous enough to be going right, and like this sure, person's yeah. boss is going to hear this and be like, why the f- did you hook yeah. Becca mm-hmm. D list Tobin <laughs> up with tickets yeah. to formula one? Okay. But I got, I got passes and I'm going to be in the paddock, which is apparently my dad lost his shit when I told him what we were going to be doing. Oh, Um, it's like a special area where you get to go and be, you know, VIPs, VIPs. And I was so excited to tell my dad because I feel like this was a really big bucket list for me as a daughter to Mm -hmm. be able to provide my dad with some experience that Mm -hmm. he wouldn't otherwise be giving himself unless he spent tons and tons and tons of money. Totally. Mm -hmm. So dad, this is for all the tips, the trips to Disney you took us on (laughs) and the beach vacations. And I went to London when I was really little and I don't remember a thing about it. And I bet that wasn't cheap. So, um, thank you for that. I'm really excited to go and I'm going to be so excited. Okay. Oh my God. Amazing. So this is my bad week. I was listening to an episode. Oh, the episode of us talking about mental health and, you know, having a very deep conversation. And I realized in the middle of it that I 
not surprising, contradicted the f- out of myself in two different episodes of the lady gang. And it upsets me deeply Okay, because I don't like it when I have such a strong opinion. And then I change that opinion to also be strong in the other direction <laughs> and never acknowledge it. So Kelsey, I apologize because you were talking about Jen Aniston going out into the woods and how there was something about like, if you have all that money, like why would you ever want to put yourself uh, back out there? Sure. Sure. Um, and I was like, yeah, you have all the money. You don't need to put yourself back out there. But then we were talking about another episode about another actress mm-hmm. who is desperate to continue to keep working. And I'm like, because when you're that type of person, it doesn't matter. Like you just want to be creative and you want to do all these things. So I am so sorry to the lady gang audience. I'm sorry to Kelty. I did contradict myself and I was really, um, committed to that opinion and I don't like this about myself so I'm sorry and so what? what's your final opinion on yeah what's going the to, opinion are we going to the woods or are we staying in Hollywood <laughs> here's the thing I I don't know I think that it's it's up it's depends on the person yeah. I like to say that if I had all the money in the world I wouldn't work again but then I really sit in that feeling and think what the f- else would I do with my life I like being on set I like talking to you guys I like having a purpose so you know what I probably would still keep working and I'm sorry for saying that I wouldn't <laughs> well I love how you worked through this and I yeah. and that you care so much about that so because- much about me I think well, other than maybe like the hate, the kind of haters that are DMing Kelsey right now, like I think nobody, nobody's really holding you to it. I know, but I don't like that feeling. It's very mm. hypocritical and I don't, I'm sure people noticed. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm sure you notice. And I'm very sorry. This is what you get for being so passionate sometimes, mm. you know, mm. hypocrisy, mm. pick a lane, pick a pick lane. A lane. Okay, Jack, the a long awaited. <laughs> Bad news week. Of the century. Are you even doing a bad week this week? I Don't. mean, my bad week is pretty much that I actually feel like complete garbage right now. My yeah. face is so fucking puffy. So when <laughs> this video goes up on our Lady Gang social, I will just be looking my absolute worst. Um, because after we got engaged, we had to go straight to fucking Vegas for Jared to play two shows right in a row. And when I'm in Vegas, I can't not rage my face off. Mm, yes. So I'm nursing like a two day over rageous. I'm nurs- Lost nursing rageous. Two- That's actually really good. Has no one ever made that shirt before? No. Las Rageous is Jack Vanek ne- dot com. Needs that, a shirt is, that is right a Jack there. Vanek original. Sorry for right. Lost Rageousing. I need to make it. Um, yeah. So I am like shaking right now because I <laughs> am going through alcohol withdrawals. Um, I'm trying to chug some water. Um, I drank a bunch of coffee this morning thinking that it would help, but you know how that goes. Now you're just shaky. <laughs> now I'm just like, I'm like, here's the ring. <laughs> so yeah, don't feel great, but good week is I'm f-ing engaged. finally. Yay. Yay. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming and I'm so happy, but I still haven't processed it. it We're going to process it together publicly <gasps> when we come back. Okay. So making content is an essential part of the lady gang and what we do to keep the show going. And I know a lot of you are business owners. A lot of you are selling things and we love Canva because Canva pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. So designing with Canva pro is amazingly fast and fun. You choose from thousands of templates that are easy to customize, or you can start from scratch. Personally, I can't start from scratch. I don't have the Jack Vanek talent, but they have these templates that make it so easy. Like I said, they have endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much much more that you can add personality and edge to whatever you design. I recently made something for a side project and they had this stock imagery that I used and made it so easy. It's so chic and designing together has never been easier. Sharing, editing, and commenting in real time. Canva Pro helps you to stay organized on the same page and on top of theme projects. So you and four teammates can unlock everything Canva Pro has to offer. Just $12.99 $12.99 a month. And it's just so amazing. So design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial. When you use our promo code, just go to canva.me slash lady to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash lady. Canva.me slash lady. 
So you guys know that CBD is kind of a religion here at Lady Gang. Definitely helps me focus when I need to get stuff done. It helps me sleep because some nights it's so hard to wind down and shut your brain off. And actually, I just gave this to my dad this week and he was like, I haven't slept the night in so long. So I know it works. Beam's nighttime CBD powder dream has completely changed our sleep. This warm cup of cocoa has been the best addition to our nightly self-care routine. It's such a nice way to wind down. And our listeners can try dream for 35% off your first month at beamorganics.com slash ladygang. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash ladygang. And you're getting more than just shut eye. You're getting your body to repair itself and get amazing sleep with vitamins, minerals like melatonin, magnesium, nano CBD. It's basically a guilt-free, sleep-promoting, warm cup of cocoa without any artificial sweeteners or added sugar. So if you want better sleep and 35% off your first month, head to beamorganics.com slash ladygang. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash ladygang. Today's episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Array. So I have been traveling for the past month straight. I've been on tour buses. I've been in a bunch of different hotels and I love traveling. But the one thing that doesn't love traveling is my stomach. I get so freaking bloated and that's why I love Array's bloat capsules. They are so good. So the bloat capsules are a blend of five herbs and one fruit-based digestive enzyme that targets bloat so you can feel relief quickly. And it addresses all possible causes of bloat it reduces heartburn, which I get all of the time, especially when I'm drinking champagne and eating, maybe at brunch. And it speeds food breakdown and prevents gas, which is the best. Just take two to three bloat capsules immediately after your meal, whether you've just had an indulgent dinner like a pasta or a pizza, or if you just need overall digestion help with your favorite foods. So right now you can use our code LADYGANG for 10% off your first order at Array.com. That's LADYGANG for 10% off your first order at A-R-R-A-E.com. Nicole Byer is single and has been for decades. She's smart, funny, and has a fat ass. So the question is, why is she perpetually single? Why Won't You Date Me is a weekly podcast part of the Team Coco family and the quest to find the answer. Every week, Nicole interviews comedians, friends, dating experts, and more to hear about their dating life and navigate out her own. The podcast is a loose discussion interviewing the guest about dating relationships or really anything that interests Nicole. New podcast episodes every Friday, part of Team Coco Network. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now back to the Lady Gang. Okay, we're back. So j- this is the engagement episode. We're so excited. We have been trying. I was there. Um, w- we've been trying not to text you and talk about it because we really wanted to save our reactions to everything that happened for the Lady Gang. So this is really the first time we have we didn't do a group text. Like, no. Oh, sorry if you haven't heard from us for three days. <laughs> we just been trying to Wait, save it. For this the girls. is this is so funny because. Uh, we'll get into it, but I had a little bit of a meltdown after, and I texted Kelty on Friday and I, didn't I was write just you back. like, no, I was like, Hey, thank you so much for coming. Like it meant so much to me. Like, sorry, I had a meltdown. And she literally never responded to me. <laughs> Kelty. I was like, does she hate him? Like, was it that bad? Does she fucking hate me? I know, but Kelty. I responded on a different chain. I know. I realized it this morning when oh I was going through my text. I'm such an asshole. So it the was truth an error. of the matter is that we have known for months that this was happening. Um, Becca was trying to fly out so we could all be together. Aww. It didn't end up working out like last minute because of work stuff. But um, we went and Jared was so fucking sweet. And I've never seen anyone so nervous. So <laughs> that, tell us the whole story, Jack. I don't even know where to start. Um, I mean, well, number one, I definitely had an idea that it was happening there, which is why I wore such a cute outfit. I was looking for my outfit for weeks. You're Called right, Becca. It. You're right. I knew it. What? Yeah. You want to know how I knew this? What? I saw that you paid your spray tanner on Venmo. Oh. And then you were also getting a manicure pedicure with Jared the day before. And I was like, this bitch knows. Oh my God. It's so Wait. funny. Becca texted me. She goes, she totally knows she got a spray tan and a manicure. I was like, no, it's like, it's an LA show. It's a big deal. All her friends are going. Like she knows that people are going to take her picture. Like she just wants so cute for the LA show. I would have um, still gotten the manicure and pedicure and spray tan before, but I love that you used Venmo as a stocking mechanism. Cause you know, I love that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Finding like, all, all the tea. So here's what happened. The main was playing at the Fonda, which is a big, huge theater in LA. Yeah. And Jared reached out and was like, hey, do you want to come? I'm going to propose to Jack like months ago. And we're like, okay, so we put it on the calendar. 
And then you had like all your friends, but then like your whole family was there too. Here's the thing. It's like, I can pick up. I, well, number one, Jared is uh, even worse liar than you. And like, <laughs> he also can't keep a secret at all. And I also know him so well that I will pick up on like the tiniest, like minutia of like a clue. So I started picking up clues a while ago. And the first clue that I picked up is I was out with him and we were talking about the engagement with a friend of mine named Bren. And cause Jared and I've been open about this. Like right. I went to pick out the ring. Right. Like I knew it was happening and we're talking to Bren and he goes, um, he like got a text message from you, Kelsey or something. He's like, Oh, Kelsey's going to help me with something with the engagement. And I was like, Oh, Kelsey's going to help with something. And then I'm like, wait, is it going to happen at the lady hang? Cause I'm like, how will Kelsey be involved? <gasps> and then, it. and then like two minutes, like not even two minutes later, the next thing he said, he's like, He's like, yes, we have a show uh, in LA on October 14th. And I'm like, Jared, you're so stupid. Like you're, you, you connected the dots yourself. And then <laughs> that was the first clue. Then the second clue were his parents came out to the show mm. and they don't come out to LA shows ever. And I'm like, why the hell would his parents just be randomly coming out to a show? Mm. Then my aunt and uncle decided that they were going to randomly be at the show. So I'm like, this is, this is too obvious for all of the people here. So I had an idea. Did you think he would do it on stage? Um, yes, only because I had like had a conversation with my mom about it. And I, I was like, it'd be so funny, like in full circle moment, like if he proposed on stage, but I didn't know the amount of like stress and anxiety that that would end up giving me afterwards. So, um, I don't know if that was an error on my part or what. (laughs) You don't know till you know, you don't know till you know. So what's so interesting is that I walked in and the show, this is what's crazy. They went on stage, you guys, at 9.50 at night on a Thursday night. Um, I was wasted by the time you were, so, you were so drunk, Jack. And during the show, they, they had the, at the upstairs at the Fonda, there's like couches for the front row, like so guests of the main. So we were sitting on the couches. I've never seen Jack having less fun at a show. Like you Did were you so, tell? I, I was like, oh, fuck. like you were so nervous. Like you were not like, yeah, like you weren't regular Jack. Like I could tell something was up. And then I turned to Anna Rose, one of Jack's friends. And, and she's like, how the fuck is he going to do this? We're on the balcony. (laughs) Oh my God. So this is what's so funny. So I had an idea what was happening at the show. Right. But like the show went on and then it kept going on and on and on. And like, I was like, I am on the balcony. So I'm like, well, maybe this isn't happening. And then, so I just like, kept drinking so by the point that my (laughs) friend came and grabbed me and like pulled me down like and then it took like five minutes to get to the stage I was like so thrown off and like discombobulated and then just like thrust onto the stage that I was just like I don't even know what the is happening right now and it was just very very overwhelming so we'll tell everyone the story. So they're, they're playing the show. The main goes on and we're like, yeah, Jerry, we're so excited. Jerry is like sweating so much. Everyone's coming up to me and telling me little tidbits of the day. Like um, what your friend Afton is like, I gave Jared a hug like before this afternoon at lunch. And he was already like in whispered in my ear, like I'm so nervous. I can't stop. Sweating. Oh my it was God. So cute. And then it was so funny. I, when I got my tickets, I was right behind your mom and dad. And I was like, Oh my God, dad, you brought the camera. Thank God. Like, you know, <laughs> Jack's dad is always videoing like Jack's on stage at a lady hang talking about her yeast infection. And her dad's like that Front dad from mean girls, like up front. Oh, like, yeah. video. And he's like, he's like, yep, I'm sure going to be videoing tonight. Lots of exciting things to video. And oh I, was my like, God. I was like, Oh my God. Like, do you know, so obviously he knew too. Well, the funniest part about that too is like everybody was sending me I have an inbox of like 150 videos of people at the show that took videos of it and during for every person's video you just see my dad's bald head like right <laughs> front and center on the barricade like taking That's a video cute. it's so cute it's just like glistening so you're walking down stage so we're up in the balcony it's like the show's been on for an hour. I'm like, when so long. F- is he going to do this? Like, they don't know songs left. No. So your friend pulls you. And then what are you thinking as you're walking to the stage? Well, she actually, she was like, literally it's so it's Fallon. She's uh, the bassist girlfriend. And she is MVP because she executed this so 
walking flawlessly. I was basically up in the barricade and my mom came up to me and I was like, Oh, I have to, I have to pee. She's like, okay, I'll go with you. And then all of a sudden Fallon just shows up out of nowhere. I hadn't seen her all day. And she's like, hi. And I was like, I have to pee. She's like, let me walk you to the bathroom. And then she just like pulls me and like pushes her way through the entire crowd goes. And we go to go backstage. I don't have an all access wristband. Uh Everybody else got all access, but me. So I didn't even have the right passes to go back. The guy, the bear, uh, the security guard wouldn't let me back. (gasps) And the song was ending. (gasps) So like Jared was about to go on. And also during all this time, Jared's playing the show. He's looking at me on the balcony. He's like, this is supposed to happen in like two minutes. And she's still up there because nobody has brought her down yet. And then, so I finally like get thrust back. She's like, she goes to the security guard. She's like, he's going to propose to her in like two seconds. She has to go back, pushes me back. And then I get like pushed on stage. And if you look at any of the videos from it, I was like so nervous. I like, didn't really go up and then like I like sat in the corner and Jared kept going like come on like come on up. <laughs> a little further and then like still I was just like on the corner like so f-ing, why am I I don't know I was just like so nervous so, so the most important- almost didn't happen well, the most important thing is that I was like Jared if you do this you better f-ing record it because I want to play it on the lady gang so enjoy listen What's up? Hey, do you guys mind if I try something really quick? I'd like to bring somebody up here. Somebody very important to me. Jacqueline, are you over there? Hey, come here. Come on. She's from this city. Um, about 13 years ago, we met down the street. Uh, I don't remember the name of the bar at all, uh, but it was, you know, it was about 13 years ago. And then about four years ago, I was right around the corner at Davy Waits. You guys ever been to Davy Waits? And. I texted Jack and I was like, hey, I'm at Davy Wayne's. Are you around? She basically said, fuck off. <laughs> so, this whole story is about being persistent, right? Because I didn't give up. And then a couple years later, we were on Warp Tour 2018. And I decided that I was going to con Jack into coming to see me. So I told her that I knew that she was coming to work. Uh, That was a lie. She wasn't coming at all. But I texted her and she was like, hey, are you single? I was like, yes. So she texted back in all caps and just said, oh boy. Anyways, she told me that when I did this, she didn't want to be at home. We're not at home. We're out. It's late, too. We're fucking out, though. Uh, She said she wanted to be around people that we love. There's a lot of those here. And uh, I'm just going to get on with it, okay? Okay. So this is a great point that you brought up, Jack, because you hung out by the drum riser while Jack, where Jared was like front center stage. And you were like, we're like, it's for you, girl. Like, get up there. Like, it was so cute. I know. Well, it's funny. My friend was like, I've never seen you this like bashful before and shy in a situation. Cause I don't, I don't know. I blacked out the entire time, obviously. I'm like, and I was also 
wasted. So that like is a really great combination, but I just like, didn't know what to do. And I guess it was just like, I don't know. I just was so nervous. It was sweet. Kristen Doty sent me this video of you guys. And she said, Sheena's little sister was at the concert last night and sent me this video. Oh my God. And meanwhile, Kelty didn't send me jack shit (laughs) the night before. Okay. I go to bed and it's because the time change it's so late in yeah. Texas by the time he even proposed, but I'm imagining I'm going to wake up to something from Kelty, a picture, a video and anything, nothing. She sent, he did it. I'm like, well, obviously he <laughs> did it. I wasn't worried he was going to do it or not. Like he told us he was doing it. Oh so, my God. I'm so sorry. Just, Kelty just like you short circuited too. You're just like, I don't know what to do. No so I'm going to do what nothing. To do. Like do no less knew. Kelty. I just, you know what? I actually, I didn't do it on purpose with Becca, but I, there is an element of it being your moment. And yeah. so it's like, I'm always a little cautious. Like even Alex was like, are we going to post something on lady gang? I was like, let's not post anything until Jack posts. Right. And he like took a full day to post anything so i'm just sitting here being like i have my she reel did. ready to go like i'm so excited where's the picture like can we post in the facebook group and i was like i don't want to be it's not my story you know so we were trying well that was like the weird part of it because it was like there was you know two thousand people that already knew it happened and like other people had been like posting videos so i was getting random congrats from people yeah like, jared's friends like randomly texting me like friends that like like Kristen t- texted me too. Yeah. And so it was really funny. Cause I was like, Oh, is it like not going to be a surprise if I post on Instagram? But I was like, Oh yeah, wait, like the other 300,000 people that weren't at the show don't know what happened. Right. Except for then it was like exploding on Twitter too. So it was like a whole thing, very like weird, bizarre situation to be in. And I'm still trying to process it. So thank you for thrusting me into this Kelsey. <laughs> It was good practice for your wedding. Exactly. That's what we said. I know. But now, because I was texting Becca about it and I was like, I had a panic attack meltdown. And she's like, well, uh, just to let you know, I had one of those during my wedding. So think about Mm -hmm. how you want your wedding to be. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like overthinking everything. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, when we come back, I want to talk about that because it's very interesting. So everybody knows that I've been extremely serious about my hair growth journey and my hair is so long now and I have been loving using Living Proof's products. I've been using them for years, so I'm so excited that they are a sponsor for Lady Gang. So their award-winning patented formulas are proven to bring out your brilliant healthy hair and they're never filled with harmful chemicals, no silicones, sulfates, parabens, or gluten, and they're never tested on animals. And there's no size fits all when it comes to hair woes. And that's why Living Proof develops game-changing formulas that set a new standard for performance tailored to unique concerns like frizz, curls, damage, scalp, care and thin hair. And that my friends is science in action. Living proof products will leave you with cleaner, healthier, more brilliant hair for longer. And it has been working for me, obviously. So put the science to work and unlock your hair's full potential with living proof. Like I did visit livingproof.com slash lady and use code lady to get 10% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash lady code lady for 10% off your first purchase. Livingproof.com slash lady code lady. Sometimes it's hard to find the perfect gift for your guy, and that's why we're so excited that Travis Matthew is a sponsor of Lady Gang. They have a handy holiday gift guide, and you can browse gifts for him by price point or by curated collection. And let me just tell you about these shoes. You know Chris Knight is a shoe connoisseur. If you're looking for his new everyday shoe that's going to make him chic and cool, but like laid back awesome, the Daily is the perfect shoe. All day, every day designed for versatility in his casual go with the everything shoe, but better. The Daily available in premium fabrications like knit, wool, and suede. Chris got the wool. It's so beautiful in a gray color. It offers comfort and style that can't be beat. So visit a Travis Matthew retail store or make your way to travismatthew.com slash podcast and take 20% off your Travis Matthew order when you use the code LADY20 at checkout. That's 20% off your entire order at travismatthew.com slash podcast when you use the code lady 20. Go get your deal. Get your man some real cute new shoes for the holidays. And you're going to feel so good in your couple Instagram photos. TravisMatthew.com slash podcast. T-R-A-V-I-S-M-A-T-H-E-W.com slash podcast. 
So, you know, we love our sponsors over here at the Lady Gang. One I especially love is the brand Chinette. I've been using Chinette since long before they were a sponsor. I love, love, love the ease and elegance of their products. Zach and I do a ton of entertaining and we do a ton of outdoor entertaining. He grills all the meats and we do ribs and we do cocktails and Chinette has everything we could possibly need for all these gatherings and it's easy. So they have their classic collection, which is super durable. No bends or leaks, microwave safe, made of at least 80% recycled materials, which we love made in the USA. They have their crystal, which is the elegant, but the guests aren't too afraid to touch it because it will not shatter. And it has a beautiful swirl design, the China comfort with the built-in sleeve that keeps drinks hot and hands happy and a snap on lid. I recently took one on a walk around the neighborhood with my um, hot tea at night. It stayed nice and toasty. We love it made in the USA as well. And they can handle anything from our messiest ribs to the most generous slices of cake. So visit my chinet.com to find out more about this brand we love so much. Okay, ladies, can't remember the last time you wanted sex. Oh, you've got kids in the car. I know. We'll call it ice cream. Listen, ice cream, you scream, maybe not for, I mean, ice cream. Oops. If your desire for ice cream feels well like a rocky road, then you are not alone. Millions of women have felt their libido melting away because of a medical condition known as hypoactive sexual desire disorder or HSDD. But unlike brain freeze, HSDD can be treated. Maybe it's time to change the flavor of the day from not in the mood to libido renewed. So whether you're into plain vanilla or the queen of whipped cream down to the cone or deciding between the big or the little spoon, it's time to scream for ice cream again. Visit screamforicecreamagain.com to learn more. That's screamforicecreamagain.com. You're listening to The Lady Gang. All right, so... I just want a little more proposal information. So what what are you thinking? Like Jerry's down on his knee and he like has the ring in his pocket and it's like. Well, this, this is what I think is kind of funny about it is I went to watch the video because I obviously don't remember anything that he said. And I watched it. I'm like, oh, this is so cute and like simple and sweet and like, but kind of also for the crowd. And we were like talking about it. Cause you know, when you think about it, when, you know, if somebody's going to propose to you, you're like, it's going to be this like amazing, like emotional, heartfelt, like deep thing. And his wasn't, but it was like perfect for the situation. And it was like perfect for the show and like our relationship. And it's cute because he like spills his guts to me, like on a regular basis, like anytime we go out to dinner, it's like, he says like the most beautiful, sweet, like amazing things to me, like on a normal basis, like that anybody would want them to say, somebody would want them, their partner to say to them, like at a proposal. So I'm like, it was actually like perfect and short and sweet for the situation. So I loved it. And then at the end of it, he goes, I did it. He did. It was so cute. He was so nervous. So nervous. Like we went to my friend's house before too. And he was just like pacing around, like didn't know what to do. He like met my aunt and uncle for the first time. He could like barely talk to them. He was like telling random stories that didn't make any sense. So it was really <laughs> cute. Like he was just shitting his pants. And so what did you guys like? He, you had a smooch and then he kind of carried you off stage. What did you do backstage? Um, well, that was the weird part of it is so the proposal happens, then we're kind of put to the side of the stage and then John, their singer goes up and then sings an acapella version of smash mouth is smash mouth's all star. So everybody is just singing all star. And I'm like, this is a weird feeling. I'm like, well, how do I respond? I'm just kind of sitting on the side of the stage. Jared comes up and like hugs me. And then he's like, well, I gotta go back on stage now. So I'm like, what do I do? And then that is, I think when I started to like panic and melt down. Cause I was like, that's, it's a really like overwhelming feeling. And then it's like, and now what, and now where do I go? And now everybody's looking at me from the side of the stage kind of a feeling. I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a lot to take in. 
Well, it's an interesting thing because then you came back up. So the, the concert is continuing. They did like an acapella song to give Jack and Jerry some time off stage. And then like Jerry came literally back on stage and we were like clapping for him. And you weren't upstairs again for a while. And then when you came back upstairs, like I have a great video of like all your friends like circling you and everyone's like loving on you and everyone's crying. And it's so amazing. And I kind of like let, cause that's like your core group of friends, yeah. you know? And I kind of like let the core group at you and was just like hanging. Chris and I were like enjoying the show. And then when and that sort of dispersed, I walked over to you and I was like, Hey girl, I love you. I'm so happy for you. You looked like you were going to throw up. Like, <laughs> I was like there was oh, not no. like you, Jack, like I have seen you through very stressful things, putting you on TV. Good morning, America. Like yeah. so many things. And I was like, Oh my God, I, I'm something's wrong with, like, I was really worried about you. I turned to Anna Rose. I was like, is she okay? And she's like, I think she's like, oh, really overwhelmed. I was like, okay, that makes sense because you love everything and you like a concert and you like, but you also love to be in control and yeah. you have to do things your way. And so this was all uh, out of control for you. Was that what the spinning started? I don't know. See, I'm still trying to process like what it is. I think it was just like over just general feeling of like overwhelming for, for everything. I think some of it is control. And like I said, it's like, I was expecting this. So I think in my head, I played it out a certain way and I would, in my head, I was like, so chill and it would have been like, so cute back and forth and then getting thrust in that situation. I had like a meltdown and all I was saying to my mom afterwards, I was like, everybody thinks I'm so stupid. Everybody was staring at me. It was completely silent. Everybody thinks I'm an idiot. And I was just like, so embarrassed. I don't just being, I don't know why I really don't like know exactly what it is, but that's what I kept saying. And then I kept getting embarrassed because I was so upset and so embarrassed. And then it was just like the spiral continues kind of a thing. But I don't know. I think in my mind, I was like, oh, if it was like a public proposal, it would be, I'm fine. Cause I'm great. Like at public speaking and I, I don't mind crowds and I'm good at that. And I think I just acted like the, or I responded the complete opposite and it just like threw me for a loop and I just had a meltdown. But also when I'm like thrust into a, like when I get overwhelmed, I shut down. And I think that that is a culmination of all those things. I don't know. Well, I texted you afterward, like the next day to congratulate you. And then we kind of talked a little bit about it. I don't know if this is how you felt. And I kind of mentioned this in the, in the text, but it was sort of, it's sort of like at a wedding where the reason Kelty mentioned I had a meltdown, it's because everyone's looking to you to emote something that yeah. their, their expectations for how you should be looking and acting and talking and dancing and blah, blah, like are very high yeah. because you've seen these like stereotypical experiences mm -hmm. of girls getting married or girls getting engaged or couples getting engaged. And it's excitement and amazing. And everybody is, it makes people happy to see you that happy and so excited. So energetically people are expecting that of you and you know that they're expecting that of you. Yeah. But if you're somebody who internalizes a lot of stuff for, for me, particularly at my wedding, I was like, this is too much energy coming toward me. Yes. I don't want everyone running up to me. And even though their intentions are so nice, everyone wants to celebrate, but it's so much energy at you. And there's so much expectation to, instead of, I love enjoying a moment in silence. There's nothing better for me. I feel so much, if I am feeling so joyful, I'm not dancing. I'm sitting there and I'm feeling the feeling and I'm present. Yeah. Yeah. And if people see you doing that, they automatically assume that you're unhappy or you're, you don't want to be getting engaged or you don't want to be getting married, but it's really just, we're all different and nobody really allows for that space. Yeah. And so you probably just were really overwhelmed. And even if you're okay, public speaking and you're okay being on a TV show and a podcast and this, all that though, is you are controlling what you're putting out. Yeah. Like you're energetically, you are in control of what you're doing and there are boundaries there. Yeah. In that situation, there's no boundaries. Yeah, that's so true. It's that's honestly, I think exactly what it is because I was more worried at how I was being perceived by everybody else and how my reaction was and how I looked up there than mm -hmm. actually experiencing the excitement of it myself. And I think it is also different too because I was expecting it and it wasn't like I was surprised, but it was I reacted differently to how I felt thought that I was going to. And yeah. it was just, 
it was too much for me to handle. Like it really was, everything was too much. And I just like wanted to crawl, crawl in a hole and die. But mm-hmm. then I had to be, I had to go back out there and like celebrate with everybody. But like, I couldn't bring myself to do it because I was literally like in the middle of a panic attack and like melting down and in a corner with my mom, just like, I was literally crying for like two hours because it was just like way too much to handle. Yeah. That's so normal. I think it's nice that you're admitting this too, because it has absolutely zero to do with, we know you, we, we would, if we felt there was any part of you that was like doubting the engagement or Jared or any of it, we would say it. But the thing is, is that that's, what's so crazy is you can be so confident in your choice and your person and want it genuinely want it, but you can still have an experience like that and be normal. Yeah. Yep. And I woke up the next morning and I was so excited and I was so happy and like, which is so funny because that night we had to jump on their tour bus and drive to Vegas. So I went to bed alone in Jared's bunk (laughs) and like he had to sleep in the back lounge, bouncing around with Jack Daniels bottles, hitting him in the head. So he like came up to me in the morning, like to grab me to go to the hotel. And I was just like elated. I was so excited. And there was not a second in my mind where I was like, Oh no, it was more like, I don't like, Oh God, I don't know how to handle this. And now everybody's looking at me. I think that that is just kind of the bait, like the basics of how I ended up feeling, but it's also so great because Jared knows me so well that while this was all happening to me, while I was literally bawling my eyes out in a corner and I wouldn't talk to anybody, he was so confident. He was so calm. He was just like, he knew exactly what was happening to me and he was just going to be there for me. And he didn't, in his mind, doubt anything that was going on. Right, he didn't on. take it personally. It was funny, no. like he came up, so, so at, at the top of the Honda is like, uh, Fonda is like a party area and he had rented it out or whatever. And then um, fun details, he had like done these platters of like chocolate chip cookies because that's mm-hmm. like Jack's favorite thing. And so we all went up after to like say hi. And we got to see him after the show. And he said hi to about two people. And then he saw you and he was like, I got to get my wife. And then like walked over and we were like, but he wasn't like, oh my God, is it? He wasn't freaking out. He's super calm. He was just like, I get it. Jack's overwhelmed, like amazing. And it was like yeah. so sweet. And I got the most beautiful, I don't know if we told you this, but I got the most beautiful text from him the next morning. He go, he said something along the lines of like, um, hey, thanks. I, it meant so much to me that you and Chris came last night. Like so amazing. Um, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. And, and Jack is feeling great this morning. Looks like we're still getting married. <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so cute. It's not off yet. No. And, and I think this is really like, it's really cool because I think it happens in different ways. Becca happened at her wedding. Mine yeah. happened like a month before we got wedding married. Um, I was like, we're not getting married and we went to couples counseling. And I was like, I hate you. I can't do this. Like oh it's just a weird thing. And I think it's really real. And like, you're not, not happy. Like we're so excited. The other thing I want to tell you just one story is your dad. Oh my God. So we're walking out of there, like you're walking out and I walked out with your dad and I was like, did Jared ask your permission? Did he tell you the story? Yeah. You tell it, you tell it. No, you, I want to hear what my dad said to you. Well, first of all, I started bawling. Oh my God. I was like, did your dad, did Jared ask your permission? He's like, yeah. He's like, so we were out, um, shocker. We were out at dinner with Jack and Jerry, May and I, and he said, um, the girls went to the bathroom or the bar to get a drink. And Jared like got really ser- serious and really shaky and really nervous. And he was like, well, I, um, I just want to, um, uh, and couldn't like get it out. And I guess your dad like grabbed his hands. He was like, I know what you're trying to ask me right now. And the answer is yes. Oh. And then he was like, I'm such an emotional person that I was like crying that moment at the table with Jared. And then like, oh my, God. To get my shit together so that the girls did know when they came back to the table that's sweet I know well he said that yeah he like asked my dad's permission he's like uh I've only got a couple minutes because they're in the bathroom but like I really like I need to talk to you about this and then he said that they both started crying at the table and they're like we need to like pull it together and stop crying so it's not obvious when May and Jack come back so it was I mean, Jared and my dad have, Jared and my parents have the best relationship in the entire world. And for me, it's so special to see, um, them accept him so, so much. Like I've obviously never gotten to this point with any other partner before, or had my parents even like a partner of mine in the past. Mm -hmm. And my mom is the toughest cookie in the entire world. Like she is Jack times like a million when it comes to being like skeptical about things, especially about my partner. And she's just so in love with Jared. And so is my dad. And she's like, 
texting all of our relatives being like, guess we have to add Jared into the family group text now. And like, just Aww. so they're so thrilled for us. And it just makes me so happy because I wouldn't be able to go through with something without their approval. Like I'm so close to my parents and they just love him so, so much. And it just makes me like so happy and whole. Um, which makes me feel so stupid about getting so upset about everything. I'm Don't feel like, stupid, Jack. Don't feel stupid. No, I'm still on the spiral. I still feel like kind of anxious about it. But nobody know. Like honestly, if you hadn't said it in the podcast, not one person would know. Like but, the four people that were there knew. But like, yeah. But that's the why video. You look so cute. The video that was sent, I was like, this is what someone does when they get surprised proposed to. Like it was yeah. adorable. It wasn't weird at all. It was like, oh my god, this is so cute. She's so like doesn't know what to do because she's so surprised yeah it, no I know but that's why I kind of wanted to talk about it because I'm like I can't be the only person that's like felt this way when something like that happens and I feel like then you're embarrassed to admit it mm-hmm. and talk about it because it's like you don't want somebody to feel or you don't want to feel like you weren't excited about it so it's like I'm feeling these like two completely like crazy strong emotions like at the same time while I'm just trying to process it all. So, um, yeah, that's basically what being engaged and then getting married is. That's why I'm always like, Ooh, it's like, it's tough. It's not to being the bride is very difficult. Worst job I've ever had. Well, and I like, that's what I'm in the most wonderful way. Exactly what you're saying. It's the worst and the best, you know, I hate attention. Like I hate attention on me and I hate like everybody looking at me all the time. So I'm like, do I want a wedding with just my parents and then that's it? Like, I don't know. Cause that's like, that was a lot of, it was a no, lot of eyes. I think this is what you want. And this, let me tell you what you want. Cause Thank I you. know everything. <laughs> I think what you want is what I was striving for and couldn't get because I married someone who is, he's so close with so many people. Like yeah. he is, and it's genuine. There are, yeah the amount of people he's regularly in contact with and sees and makes trips and plans and blah, blah, blah. It's insane. Like, I don't know how he has the energy for it. I married that person. And so I had to sort of like compromise and have a lot of people at our wedding. Yeah. But I think that you and Jared, because now it's like, you guys can absolutely curate to have the smallest, most intimate wedding and everyone will understand. And the people that don't can honestly go themselves. Yeah. But that's what you have to do. You have to do something where you're in control of the situation. You have the people there that will accept you for however you end up dealing with it. Right. And that's it. You don't want to take care of anybody else at your wedding. You don't want to worry about anybody else at your wedding. And so people that can't do that for themselves can't come. (sighs) Yes. Yeah. You're so right. You're so right. Throw a big party after like you can throw a big or not. That party will be terrible. (laughs) Yeah. And it is. Well, that's what I was thinking. Of course, I'm like starting to go through like who would be invited because I definitely um, there's a very stark line of like Mm -hmm. people I'm close with and people I don't give a about. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly who I would invite. And so I think as long as I keep it that way, then I'll be happy because the last thing I want to do is like yeah, have to deal with a bunch of people that I don't give a shit about yeah. and make sure that they're like dinner's okay and all no. that shit. Did you no. eat? Go f- yourself. Okay. I want to get back to this celebration though, for a second, we're going to have okay. multiple episodes of lady gang planning this wedding. Don't you worry about that. Oh my God. Um, I already was like the content. I'm so excited. She's to such an idiot. Well, you know, I've already messaged some wedding dress companies because I'm like, this is what I'm most excited about is finding dope ass dress yeah i'm so excited what so you wake up the next morning and you're like okay the the jack down is over the jack down is over (laughs) and you've got that he i know you were part of it but like you guys crushed the ring it's it's so beautiful can you talk about this the ring yeah so um i got it made with uh david's house of diamonds they're down in full fullerton they're amazing david the guy that owns it was working with jared like every step of the way we went down there twice to look at diamonds and it's funny because you'd be like showing like up, up close the clarity and like all, all this. And I was asking you guys about it. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what a, a color number means or clarity or whatever, but I was like, I, where's like, the big ones, like, <laughs> you know, like the, the big round ones. Like, so I don't really care about those things, but Jared did. So he worked with him to like, pick out the most beautiful diamond it was bigger than the one that I saw that I thought he was gonna get so that was you were surprised 
that was the only thing I said after it happened. I was like, this is bigger than I thought. I was like shaking. I was like, it's so big. <laughs> but he did such a good job. It's so beautiful. And the best part was I did not know what size my finger was. So I thought it was a six and a half. And I was like, yeah, it's a six and a half. Like whenever you get around to making the ring, like that's what it is. And then I think I got size when we did the aura rings. And yeah. I was like, oh no, I'm a five and a half. Oh, I was like, this shit. ring is going to fall off my finger. But he ended up getting it changed in time. So it honestly, it's perfect. I love it so much. It's like nice and simple and blingy. And it honestly feels perfect on my finger. Like I was saying that to Jared, like I never wear rings. I don't like jewelry and yeah. it like doesn't really feel like I'm wearing anything. So it's really nice. Perfect. It's so pretty. When you roll, like, what was your thought when you rolled over? You're like, I've got like, like, tell me the next day thought. Well, the first thing I thought when I rolled over was I don't have my phone. I lost my phone like 15 times the night before yes, in did. my panic. <laughs> um, so I first made Jared go find my phone. It was like sitting beneath a cushion in the back lounge somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then he just came over and he was, they, somebody gave them this like massive cowboy hat. I'm sure you guys saw my story yes. of him wearing this huge cowboy hat. So he comes and he like wakes me up and he's wearing the big cowboy hat. And it was so cute because I'm like, it was so perfect and silly and like a great way to just like get me out of my spiral. And then I just woke up feeling great. Like that's, that was like the craziest part of it. I was just like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I'm so fucking happy. I'm so ready to celebrate. And I, all that was kind of just in the night before. That's good. It's so much better to have it go that way than the opposite. Like mm -hmm. be the person who's so excited and so excited and you're getting carried away on like the attention and the ring and the this and that. And then the next morning you wake up and you're like, what the f did I agree to? Be like, oh no, I hate you. That Do you remember would be when so much worse. I got married for the first time and I wrote in our first book when he proposed to me and then I walked down the hill and was already thinking like, what the f <laughs> Yeah. You're like, yeah. I'm going to divorce is fine. Divorce yeah. is crazy. You're <laughs> like, you're in the best position. Well, Jack, we're so... <laughs> happy for you and jerry oh thanks we're Danny having Arnold. a wedding Woo! lady gang wedding <laughs> wedding gang wedding gang oh, I'm oh so god i'm so happy for you um i hope everyone enjoyed this episode please go follow jack follow jerry <laughs> send them all their love we are now looking for dresses and venues and florists and throw all the free things our way please we please, need a please registry please. if you have plates she needs a house anything you can <laughs> offer jacqueline for the wedding she will wear with a crop top and influence that's what's up Ooh. but if we had toffee fay sponsor the wedding and like that was like oh, the i love would it's the perfect love. dessert it really is toffee fay for everybody well five six seven eight see you, <laughs> see next, you next tuesday, tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. So I love to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Beam. If you want better sleep and 35% off your first month, head to beamorganics.com slash ladygang. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash ladygang.